What's going on guys? Hope you're all well. So this video is not a video I was actually planning on making. I was out the other day um, doing a ride, a big ride, which was going to be this video. However, unfortunately, I broke my old trusty Garmin. It fell off the mount and it smashed. In terms of how the software of this works, I've had no issues. The battery life, it's, it's a bit old and it's a bit rubbish, but it does its job and I normally have a dynamo to charge it. However, with this device, I, the, the few issues I have had are the, the, the button here broke and Garmin just have no way of you sending it them to fix, even if you want to pay. They just don't have any of this thing in place. Also, the charger port became very temperamental and didn't really work. So I was planning on just fixing these stuff myself, but after the screen breaking and smashing to pieces, I just couldn't be bothered. So this video is going to be about the Element Roam, my new computer. So the reason I went for the Woohoo Element Roam is because all I hear is, re is very, very good things about them. How easy they are, how perfect they are, um, you know, how good they are basically, and how superior they are to Garmin's. Now, I brought this with my own money. I can be as honest as I like. And I will say, the Garmin has actually been very good in terms of like what I need it to do, the mapping, everything like that. The battery is pretty rubbish. I can probably get about six or seven hours if I'm not following a route. So about the time I got this, this was like, I think I got this like four or five years ago now. So I'm not really comparing it in terms of battery to, to them. However, with Garmin, not having any way to fix certain issues and like the button and stuff, it was it was just annoying because such a simple thing could have been fixed so easy, but there I have it. So the goal for today is to essentially give this new Element Roam like a first first hands-on impression of somebody who's never really used it. You're coming from a Garmin. Are you gonna like it? There is a few things that I want to test out. The major thing is the battery and also obviously the mapping and I would like to talk about the segments. So we're heading over to the Perbex just over there where I have a route loaded onto this thing and we're going to give that a good test see how it compares to me if you like if you're coming from the Garmin how it's going to feel I want to test this thing, this for the battery life, like a first hand, real life, how much battery are you actually going to get on one of these when riding it. So I should mention how this uh, room is set up. Essentially it's set up pretty much exactly how it comes out of the box. I changed one of the data screens so I could see the battery level. Um, apart from that, it's pretty much the same. Auto light is on. However, there's no accessories attached, no power meter, no heart rate monitor, nothing. So, that's how it's set up. And there is one concerning thing already. I set off with 100%. It's only been 30 minutes and it's gone down to 92%. So I'm not sure how realistic Wahoo's 17 hour battery life is going to be, but we'll see because Auto light potentially could use quite a lot of battery, but that seems quite a lot for how quick that's gone down. So, uh, 
head over to the Perbeck still and let's carry on. Okay, so I've just stopped. I'm like quite close to the start of the route, so I want to test like setting up the route and then like if it will actually take me to the start of it. I think it's up that way. I haven't actually been to the start of it. So one thing to say is that 55 minutes well, who is at 90%? It's at one hour, one hour eight at the moment, it's still at 90%. So it does seem to have sort of settled from the first sort of like half an hour where it dropped like nearly six, seven percent. Let's jump into setting up the route and let's see how easy it is and how fast it is. Let's do it. So we're going to go to page. So we're here. I want to go route. So I've got. Uh, where is it? So it's this one. So it's loading the route. Okay. So it's loaded. Will it actually take me to it? So press route. Uh, okay. So I guess I have to get there myself. I don't know if that's like the line to take me. Okay, well, it's loaded. It loaded pretty quick. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> it's loaded pretty quick. I'm not, I think that's the line for it to start. I'm not actually 100% sure. It's not exactly completely easy to understand what's going on here okay so i'm going to start the route so i'm going to ride up to the route now start it and i'll give you some feedback once i've been on it it's about a seven i think it's about a 70 mile route so it should take a few hours and there is some points where i'll come along the same road but in a different direction so it'll be good to see compared to a garmin how it sort of because it does sort of show the way you're going. And I think on a Garmin it just shows lines from what I can remember. So let's get into it. Once I, once I press start and resume the ride, it did actually ask me if I wanted it to be directed to the start of the route. So it does do that. Um, you just have to start. To be honest, it's a bit weird because then you sort of start and then it's like, oh, do you want to start? <laughs> okay, I have, I have found one issue so far that is really it kind of bugs me and it's kind of annoying on the maps when you come up to a roundabout especially if it's a little roundabout which we have a lot of in england you can't actually see it's a roundabout coming up on there so you're not actually and it's quite hard to tell which exit to take um so that's a bit of a pain to be honest so far um let's check the battery the battery it's currently at 87%, so it's definitely like settled down. It's not just draining. So, that's, yeah, it's not too bad. And I, the battery is sort of settled down. It seems to be a lot better. So, one thing I will say I do like is that it actually shows me how fast I'm going while on the maps page, which I don't believe my Garmin ever used to do. However, when I'm coming up to a turn, it, it doesn't give me... When I'm coming up to a turn, it doesn't give me like it's coming up in 100 feet, 200 feet, whatever like that, uh, like my Garmin used to do, which I kind of preferred because I could kind of work out if it was going to be this turn and it wasn't just like GPS going weird. Um, I have, re have realised I was zoomed out quite far, so now zooming in a bit more, I've obviously got a bit more detail. So hopefully that'll make like roundabouts a bit easier, so... We'll carry on. battery um, is only at 77% so 
be honest, like I think you could probably do a good 200 mile ride, probably even without, probably without um, even having a battery pack. I think it'd be fine. I've probably got about 40 or so, 40, 50 miles to go until I get home. But there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is, is the segment screen. My issue comes with this because it shows everything you need apart from the actual map compared to my Garmin you get like a map of the actual segment that you're on and the route fortunately on the Wahoo it, it just shows time behind personal record etc however it doesn't show the map which I really really want because I like to do sort of time trial ones that's that is something I would much prefer to have here is the map instead of like the elevation maybe you can change it i don't know if you can comment and let me know so coming to the end of the ride now i'm gonna head back and we'll jump into what i like what i dislike what i think could be improved what i think is better than garmin or whatever you know everything um but battery i actually think you could probably do around 300 miles if you wanted to on one battery so that is good so we're back after the ride did it just over 100 miles um, testing the Wahoo Element Room and to be honest like when I was riding that I think I was picking up all the bad things about it so we're gonna start with the good things I think let's yeah let's start with the good things so after a, after about 100 once I hit the 100 mile mark I, I don't know how long it had been on but it was actually at 70% battery after the initial first like 50 minutes it had gone down like nearly 10% I was a bit worried about that however it did seem to just sort of sort itself out and sort of calm down a bit to a few reasons why I really like this device number one is the way it displays the route especially on this route in particular it was a a bit of a loop so normally on the Garmin, at least this one, I'm not sure about the newer ones, I think they're still probably the same. So they don't show which way the route is ridden, so you essentially just follow a blue line. However, on this one, it does have obviously like the arrows um, telling you which way it goes, which is, a, which is especially nice when you come to a, a road where you go on it twice in that loop one might be going left, one might be going right. It actually says, yeah, you're going right on this time and then so on. So that is um, a very plus, that's a big plus for this device, especially if you do lots of loops. It's a lot easier to read. So the second thing I much prefer on this, it is much easier to just, in the middle of your ride, start and end routes and load new ones. That just, seems easier i don't i'm not even sure if you can if i even know how to do it on this one because i think if i started a, a ride i would start it at the beginning and then just leave it i would never go into another route while in a ride on this i'm not even sure if you can it, you might have to end the ride to load another one i'm not 100 percent sure on that though but the fact that this is very simple you just click on route and you can load or end the route that you're doing and then load another one. That's very good and it's very quick as well, which is nice. So the third thing I really like about this device is when you're following a route and you're on the maps page, it actually tells you how fast you're going at the top. I think it's the top right corner on this, um, which is always nice. I, I like to know how fast I'm going and my Garmin never showed me that. And it's just a simple thing. Okay, so I have to, I don't want to compare the battery life on the two of them because very old device, very new device and I'm pretty sure the new Garmin's have a lot better batteries nowadays. However, I've got to say, after 100, 100 miles and still having 70% battery life, I'm impressed. It's, it's nice. I, I think I could probably do maybe even a 300 mile ride in, that, in its claimed 17 hours. I didn't have anything attached to this device, no no accessories, just it just literally had the auto light on, that was it. So after the whole ride, which was probably around six hours with some stops and stuff, um, I was on about 67% when I ended it, so 
yeah, it's you can definitely if this if you want to do long rides, you can definitely do it on this. However, not everything is perfect, and this is not perfect. It gets a lot of it has a, it seems to have a lot of following being like the most perfect device per perfect computer however i don't think it is and if you're coming from a garmin i will say these are the a couple things that i did not like about this the first thing i do not like about this device is if you're like me you like to go and chase some segments sometimes Especially for me, I like to do the longer ones, more the time trial -y ones, and versus my Garmin, which is a very old device. Yeah, the screen, the segment screen, I much prefer on the Garmin. The reason I prefer it is because it has the map of the actual segment. So especially on them longer ones, you can sort of see how far you've got to go. However, on the Wahoo, it's just... It tells you how far ahead you are, how far behind, um, and what you're chasing, basically, if you're going your personal record, or the KOM, whichever one it is. Um, and I think it has elevation. But when you're doing a long time trial one, where it might be 10 miles, and maybe you don't really know the course that well, you kind of want to see the map. I'd much prefer the map. And also, you can see on the Garmin, the, a little icon of where the other person or your best would be on that map so you can kind of get an idea of how far ahead they are or behind and not just the two seconds ahead or behind sort of thing. So segment screen, I'm giving it to the Garmin. I prefer it on there. Hopefully maybe they'll add that, I don't know because I, I like to have that map. Okay, and the second thing I don't really like about this device is you can only scroll through the pages one way. Now that's not to say the Garmin is perfect because as soon as it rains you can't scroll on it anyway and I that always annoyed me although I think they have got a lot better with the newer versions. However say I'm on this screen and then I want to go across and check the map and then I want to come back to I don't know, another screen that I have, I have to keep going and I have to press it more than once. And then event and occasionally you want to get back to this screen, you accidentally tap it again and you go past this screen. Then you've got to go all the way around again until you get to it. If I could go both this is what I prefer on here is like I just want to check this map and I want to go back to see my data screens. I can just do that in literally a quick swipe. Although if it's raining, this doesn't really do that and you're just stuck on whatever screen it's on. So it's not a killer for this device, but I just don't really like only having one way to swipe through the screens. Maybe there's an, a way that you can change that, I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments if you can. Third thing I don't really like about this Wahoo Element Room is when you're trying to follow a route, on the Garmin, it will tell you how far you have until you need to take the next turn. So it might say it's a mile away, it might say it's 300 feet. However, on this, I, I believe it beeps at you, but to be honest, I missed the beeping quite a lot and I didn't even like notice it. So not having a sort of indicator of how far the next turn is, I kind of prefer it on the Garmin. So I'm giving the Garmin that sort of edge on there because much prefer the way the edge handles directions while coming up to a turn or just it just seems to when you're actually trying to follow a route you know that oh, you've got a mile to turn left that's quite I, f I find that quite useful so you know you can get your head down and just carry on on this I found that I was really trying to like focus on it kept having to focus on that instead of just Oh, I know it's about a mile away, so I don't have to worry about it. And the fourth thing, and the final thing, I would say negatively about this device right now, which is something I was really hoping not to have an issue with, because everyone says how perfect this device is. It, for me right now, it is not, it is not auto-uploading to Strava. It, I connect it, I've done everything, 
it does not upload. I end up having to unpair my phone, delete the app, reinstall the app, basically set up the whole device again before it pushes it to Strava. I've tried deauthorizing Strava, I've tried reauthorizing it. As soon as I delete the app, delete my phone off the Bluetooth, repair it, etc., etc., and then and then it just uploads. So right now it's really annoying me um, how I finish a ride and I end up having to have, have like all that fuss just to upload it. I will say, Garmin, the first time I ever did that, first time I tried to auto upload through here, I had the exact same issue. So it's not something that's either or, it can happen on both, definitely. However, once I had reinstalled it and everything, it constantly worked on here. Granted, maybe not at the moment because Garmin's down or whatever. However, that's, that could happen to a Woohoo as well. I prefer the mapping on this. However, I prefer using the Woohoo to, it, it seems a bit easier to just, while you're in a ride, to do things. So if you have any comments or questions about the Woohoo Element Room or even the Edge 1000, um, please do leave it in the comment section below. If you have any fixes or solutions for the things I dislike on the Woohoo, I'd love to hear them because, you know, this is just a first time experience using this. I'm sure I will like it more once I get used to it. So if you've enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and keep smiling.